Hi, my name is Vena. I'm originally from Rio, but I live in Nandi. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm John from Kornabuan Tapua. I love listening to Today FM. It rocks. Bula, I'm Tupola. Bula, I'm Atanisi. We love listening to Today FM because it rocks in bar. Bula, my name is Tisa. I love listening to Today FM. Today's hit music on Today FM. Tonight, a feast for former FMPF board members revealed. Penang Mill, a write-off, says Prime Minister. And millions held in trust for Ethel K landowners. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Two employee representatives on the former board of the Fiji National Provident Fund were paid exorbitant amounts as director's fees. Trade unionists Felix Anthony and Daniel Urai were called out by Economy Minister Aya Said Kayum in Parliament today. Rachel Nath tells us more. Uh, no, we are not going to do that. A straightforward answer when asked whether the FNPF Act would be amended to bring back worker representation on the board. The government's reasons for this may leave many Fijians questioning what the former FNPF board was up to. Felix Anthony and Daniel Urai collected $185,000, Felix Anthony, during 2007-2009. Daniel Urai collected $156,000. We did. We did. Following the act at that time. Side Kiyum adds Anthony and Uri not only picked up large sums of money while supposedly representing workers, but were also part of bad financial decisions such as the Nathan Dollar and Mommy Resort projects. At the end of the day, Madam Speaker, what matters is whether our young employees today, our youth, people who are 23, 24, 25 years old who are contributing to FNPF in 25, 30 years time when they retire, will the fund be viable or not? That is not the amount that went into our pockets per se. No. That included the allowances and everything that board members were entitled to, but not cash. He, he stems my name out in Parliament under the protection of Parliament. He, I tell him to say that outside. Look, at that time the, the law was set where we had to appoint people from the trade union sector, we had to appoint people from the employer sector, we had to appoint from people from the government sector. They were appointed, they collected a large amount of director's fees, yes. They did do that. Unfortunately, they're no longer on the board. Let's not dwell in the past. The minister is adamant the board's composition of FNPF will not change. This is only to ensure mistakes of the past are not repeated. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Parliament has defeated a petition signed by 300 sugarcane growers filed by opposition MP Prem Singh asking for urgent repair of the Penang sugar mill in Ra. Singh argues the closure of the mill has affected farmers and the economy of Rakiraki town. Ellen Stalls with the story. Sugar Minister Vorenge Mbanimarama has announced Penang mill is a write-off while responding to an opposition petition. I have visited with the Penang mill after Winston. I have talked to the farmers regularly, on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is a different story. When I explain to them the fact about Penang Mill, they understand. I don't know who's talking to him. The fact of the matter, Madam Speaker, is this mill is 140 years old. Mbani Marama went on to say that the sugar bill, which is also before Parliament, addresses a number of issues facing the industry. He also says the state of the mill is so bad that there can be no band-aid solutions nor quick fix options which can be implemented in a year or two. Till now there's been no word from the government as to what is the future of the mill. The 2017 harvesting crescent season is three months away and growers are naturally worried that just as last season they will be forced to transport their crop to Rarawai Mill in Bar. The matter was also acknowledged by FSC CEO Graham Clark last week. Over the past decades, I would say, unfortunately Penang has suffered undercapitalization in terms of its operational efficiency. Uh, so if you look at the numbers, it hasn't operated at the levels that the other factories have. The Prime Minister adds farmers from Ra are being compensated for cutting cane to Rarawai Mill and that the non-operation of the mill will not affect their bottom line. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. $13 million is in trust for more than 14,000 landowners below the age of 18. This was confirmed by the Minister for Ethel K Affairs, Vorenge Mbaini Marama, in Parliament this morning. Anna Ravolo reports. 
The trust money will continue to grow as more lease payments are paid out to landowners. And in a few years' time, these children, when they become adults, will have access to a very healthy sum of money to begin their adult life. Bani Marama says this money are earning interest and can only be accessed by Itoke landowners once they turn 18. The children uh, below 18 uh, in the distribution of the, uh, the lease, what happens if the child dies before he or she reaches 18 and who's, uh, where will that money go to? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, we thank you for that question, Madam Speaker. We are developing rules on that. Uh, there's been discussions uh, on that issue over the last couple of months by the TLTB staff, and uh, we will come up with uh, the result soon. The TLTB has opened more than 50,000 bank accounts for members of land owning units who are directly receiving land list money. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Opposition member Biman Prasad was told to withdraw comment against Fiji First members. The Speaker directed him to withdraw after he was responding to Health Minister Rosie Akbar's ministerial statement. Madam Speaker, some, uh, I'm told that some members on the other side see a lot of watchers and witch club doctors. You know? <laughs> Madam Speaker, every morning in this uh, Honourable House, we pray to God. But uh, the Honourable Member, I suggest he should withdraw that uh, his uh, statement that uh, we are going to witchcraft. He should withdraw. We all believe in God. That's why we've got plenty of seats. The member, members have taken offence to the use of that word, and I would like you to withdraw. Well, Speaker, that was a that was a light no, comment. I'm amazed, I'm amazed at the order. Anyway, I, I withdraw the word which I had the witchcraft. <laughs> The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority has confiscated almost $200,000 cash and other items from a Taiwanese fishing vessel in Suva. Furka Chief Executive Viswanath Das says the vessel was targeted by customs after it had been risk assessed as high following profiling. A rummage team seized cash, liquor and cigarettes. Still ahead, new waste policy to protect the environment and government investing in new fire stations. The National Fire Authority is currently extending its reach to address the growing number of structural fires in the country. While responding to questions in Parliament this morning, Minister for Infrastructure and Transport Parvin Bala said the government is working together with the National Fire Authority to address the issue. Sainiani Boiler reports. The Infrastructure Ministry is currently investing in upgrading NFA resources. The government grant of 2.4 million in number one and Rekiriki fire station shall commence construction within two months' time. Madam Speaker, Lemi and Nakasi fire stations are at the planning stages and construction work shall commence within three to four months. Meanwhile, during the firefighters passing out parade for 34 trainees this morning, Chief Guest Military Commander William Enopoto thanked the NFA for its crucial role in the provision of emergency services in Fiji. Your role has expanded from just fighting fires to include other areas of emergency responses like road accident rescue, hazardous material rescue operations, urban search and rescue. Naupoto adds the 24 structural fires recorded so far this year show an alarming rate that needs urgent attention. With millions in new investment for new fire stations and other services, the government is taking a strong stand to reduce the number of structural fires and to be ready to respond to them if necessary. Sainiani Mboila, ABC News. 
liquid trade waste policy will be implemented in three months to ensure proper disposal of chemical waste. Environment Minister Pervimbala confirms all those wishing to dispose of liquid trade waste will have to get a permit from the Fiji Water Authority and will be expected to meet standards. Kelly Vadala reports. Chemical and waste spills have affected hundreds of lives according to Pravin Bala. But now the government is writing up a new policy to deal with the issue. All liquid trade waste customers are required to install pre-treatment facilities to initiate waste management at source. The intention is to reduce cost and impact associated with treating chemicals. Opposition MP Nikona Waikula questioned why the policy hasn't come to parliament yet since it was approved by cabinet last month. And this policy is only coming on the uh, 14th, on the 14th of uh, February. So can you explain to us what, what's the reason for the delay? It is only this government who's putting serious money into this wastewater yeah, system. Yeah. Bala has confirmed the Water Authority of Fiji has major upgrading work planned out. According to Water Authority of Fiji, the plans that they have for 2017 and 18 is a major upgrading works that will take care of all these things. Bala says in an effort to create more awareness on this policy, consultations have already taken place in the central, eastern and northern divisions. Twelve officers have also undergone training and are currently posted to WEF units around the country. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Pacific Cement has been ordered to stop offloading clinker at a government jetty in Lamy, also used by Fiji Fish Limited. Fiji Fish took the cement maker to court, saying corrosive substances affects the health of its workers. The Suva High Court has ruled clinker is hazardous substance, and any discharge to the environment will have adverse effects on human health, causing severe irritation to the throat, lungs, and skin. The court also states Pacific Cement should understand that Fiji Fish is engaged in food processing, and clinker can affect quality. The Fijian Elections Office and the Association of the World Election Bodies have signed a terms of reference to support building electoral transparency. The one-year project worth around $1.4 million will introduce automated voting and counting systems. AWEB General Secretary Kim Young Hai says this will allow the FEO to enhance elections management. Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim says the technical assistance will also strengthen data security. Elections officer and AWEB are currently working towards introducing for the first time ever uh, touch screen voting devices and upgrading their IT infrastructure. We'll be investing in uh, 50 units of touch screen voting machines that will be uh, used for trade union elections only. In world news, a lone attacker used a vehicle to randomly run down pedestrians in London, England. This morning's attack on Westminster Bridge killed four people and injured 20. And later on in sports, Fijian boxers prepare for bouts against Australian competitors. But for now, it's business with Rachel. Yes, Jackie, a lot's been happening in business. SPTO prepares for regional tourism marketing. And in growing Fiji biomass plant nears completion. Stay with us. I'm Prafnil from Nepata and I love listening to today FM. My name is Stanley Goodler. And I'm from Australia, but I'm part Fijian from Rotraki. And I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune into Today FM in Nasalai Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inai Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Pasa. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hey, my name is Naushin and I'm from San Beto and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. <laughs> In business tonight, the South Pacific Tourism Organization today received 60000 from the Bank South Pacific to have the major event happening in Sydney, Australia in two months' time. SPTO plans to have the South Pacific Tourism Exchange event in May, where it will bring different buyers from around the world and give them a chance to showcase the South Pacific. The South Pacific Tourism Exchange has um, grown from its humble beginnings in 2014 and now in 2017 now it's fourth year 
uh, it's an umbrella platform that we've created uh, particularly to get the buyers from overseas as well as the sellers. The number of visitors from Australia has grown at an average of 3% from 2012 to 2015. Tourism Minister Fayaz Koya says more than 300,000 visitors came to Fiji in 2016 despite tropical cyclone Winston. Australia visitors constitute 59% of total visitor arrivals. For January this year, the Australian market has hit an all-time high of 30,128 Australian arrivals which is again a 3.4% increase compared to the same period last year. This week is seen a few unexpected events on the economic scene. Here's Elizabeth from HFC Bank to tell us more. Thanks, Rachel. In our economic calendar news, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand decided to retain the official cash rate at 1.75% this morning. This strengthened the Kiwi dollar further today. Meanwhile, Oil prices slipped again yesterday to their lowest since November of last year. This is because the United States shale oil producers have been building new rigs, boosting the country's weekly oil production. It's now about 9.1 million barrels per day from an average 8.9 million barrels for 2016. Even though the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, and some non-OPEC members have reduced their output by 1.8 million barrels per day, it still has done little to reduce bulging global oil stockpiles that are keeping the price low. Vinaka, and back to you, Rachel. Thanks, Elizabeth. On to today's exchange rates. The Chinese yuan and the American dollar weaken against the Fijian dollar, closing at 3.26 and 47 cents respectively. As far as regional currency, there was a contrast as Australia, the Australian dollar closed at 61 cents and the New Zealand dollar dropped closing at 66 cents and the PNG Kina went down to close at 132. Onto the commodities market, a drop across the index. Oil closed at 47.27 a barrel. Gold closed at 1,241 an ounce. And silver closed at 17.53 an ounce. In Growing Fiji tonight, as work on the $90 million biomass power station nears completion, fields are being prepared in Singatoka to grow a variety of trees to feed the plant. Twelve farmers who lost their contracts with the Fiji Sugar Corporation are now working for Nambo Green Energy Limited, with the first harvest expected in two years. Alan Stalls has more. Located along the Queen's Highway in Nandranga, the 12-megawatt biomass plant is a joint venture between three Korean companies and Tropic Woods Industries Limited, scheduled to open in May. Uh, Fiji, more than 50% depending on the fossil fuel, and then uh, we think that uh, maybe this other 50% can change to another sustainable uh, energy resource. The plant uses a special tree species, Gliricidia sapium, that when matured is harvested and fed into the plant, producing clean, renewable energy. To ensure that the biomass plant works to full capacity, it's ex-sugarcane fields such as this one right here that will need to be planted with the various species. One of those farmers is Sanaila Kurusalili, overjoyed at this new opportunity. I'm thankful and happy for this company. I used to plant sugarcane but now this has stopped and my land has been lying idle since. The company brings in seeds and pays for the clearing of the land, planting and harvesting. Uh, they'll be one of the suppliers to the, uh, one of the many suppliers uh, to the power plant uh, because we are accepting uh, logs, we are accepting uh, fuel wood, we are also accepting debris from uh, sawmill and also harvesting residues. 120 locals are employed at the plant and Korean engineers are training locals to run the plant completely in the next few years. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. And that's it from Business Now to Sports and here's Jamie with the latest. Thanks Rachel and good evening in sports after the break. Tambakal Doro out to impress for Police Blue 7 Steam. And Roy Krishna hopes to repeat history at Churchill Park this weekend. This and more coming up.
borong na radio fujiwan. Bulan ay rango fina ay korbiri nandi. Ato talitaka na borong ay na radio fujiwan na programo ni mas masu ay na mataklaylay. Oya ocho ni kurnabila may hunagoru na maketehina toka pa ito talitaki na na borong na radio fujiwan kina na dumoyviti. Na radio fujiwan na dumoyviti na bonga ni BNN. All eyes will be firmly fixed on Pacific Sprint King turned rugby wing Banuve Tambaka Odoro when the Fiji Bitomar Sevens kicks off in Suva tomorrow. The former national sprinter has made it into the police blue side for the tournament. Vasnil Prasad reports. Known for his speed on the athletic tracks, these powerful legs are now being used by Banuve Tambaka Odoro to impress in rugby sevens. Dimbau led revealed his move to police side has helped immensely. All throughout my, uh, uh, my athletics career, I've always been disciplined. So uh, joining the police force, you know, uh, discipline was one of the uh, key factors for me. So, you know, joining them, they were very structured and uh, the training was very tough indeed. And, uh, you know, training down in Singatoka, it was really tough. Being part of this excellent group, the 24-year-old has picked up a lot about the abbreviated code. I got some really tough trainers here, uh, the likes of Mona Sambari, our coach, and Etonia Namba as well. Uh, you know, just being around uh, those uh, seasoned players has been really great. Tambaka Udoro could prove to be a handful for opponents if he gets open pasta during the tournament. Bob Bullard has uh, gelled in well with the team. He's learned a lot and that's the whole intention for him. The whole objective was to come and learn uh, about rugby and I believe he's gained a lot. It's not only Tambaka Udoro desperate for showing as his club has also not tasted a victory for a number of years. 90% of the team we've been that we've selected to prepare for the Murray 7 is new boys. Uh, they are, what we've tried, we've tried to gel them in well, uh, uh, get a combination working right, and there's a few, few surprises that we have. There are no big names in the side, with former national rep Manuel Langai, the only standout name. The combination of a spring king and a rugby club takes a new twist tomorrow when they team up for the Mari Sevens. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Fiji Bitomara Sevens received a timely boost today with BLK coming on board with sponsorship of merchandise. BLK will supply rugby balls as well as attire for ball boys and referees during the two-day tournament. Maris Rugby Club President Lawrence Tikaram says support from sponsors has been outstanding this year. We know that this is one of the basic tools that each team will require. And hopefully the, you know, they will take pride in your sponsorship and your association with us and also for the help for the referees. Meanwhile, ANZ Stadium is also in top shape to host the Mara Sevens for the next two days. Ground workers were busy putting in finishing touches and the pitch looks in perfect condition. If it's good enough for the Chiefs and Crusaders, it's good enough for the Mac of all Sevens, uh, Fiji Bita Mara Sevens. So, uh, no. Uh, the main ground is in impeccable condition. Uh, the other grounds outside, they're working in at the moment. They'll be all marked today. Uh, clearly designated ground 2, 3 and 4, uh, roped off. Fijian football wonderboy Roy Krishna is hoping to repeat his 2008 performance against New Zealand at the FIFA World Cup Stage 3 qualifier this weekend. Nine years ago at La Toca's Churchill Park, Krishna scored two goals in a 2-0 win over the All Whites, which was also the last time Fiji beat New Zealand. Rohit Deo reports. Our top marksmen ready to take on the all whites. I'm getting used to the boys, you know, they, they've been training really well and pretty fit. So uh, I think uh, we've been working on our, our position on, in the game. And uh, yeah, I'm getting used to the boys, and uh, so far, so good. Krishna will be up against some of his Wellington Phoenix teammates on Saturday. The striker, originally from Lambasa, says this will not affect his performance on the field. No, I don't think so. You know, like I said, um, it's not my club, you know, it's my country and uh, it's, it's going to be a different atmosphere and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing Fiji jumper so there's no teammates in, in that game. Coach Christophe Gamel has had a very short time with a full team and the Frenchman says he has done what he could in this time. It's like uh, the pressure start to, to arrive on of, uh, some players' shoulders so we will discuss about it and uh, the pressure, you know, can be positive also. It's a fantastic game to play. New Zealand arrives tomorrow and the match kicks off at 1pm at Churchill Park. Rohit Deo, FPC Sports.
Meanwhile, New Zealand midfielder Marco Roez says mastering the mental side of the game will be the key to the All-Whites taking the next step on their road to Russia. The Melbourne Vic Fiji Amateur Boxing's number one fighter Winston Hill will be our top bet at this weekend's Fiji vs Queensland promotion. The 23-year-old has been preparing well under the watchful eyes of coach Napoleon Tamo Piao. Rohit Deo caught up with the two were training today. Hungry for his first fight after the Rio Olympics in Brazil last year. We've been training really hard for this camp. Uh, we expected uh, Australia to come with a very solid team uh, that's been training really hard as well. Um, those guys have been uh, in camps rolling over from last year, so we're expecting nothing but the best from Australia. He will be fighting Adam Kay, who is Australia's is one of the top amateur boxers. The 2016 Olympian says he will try his best to put up a good fight for the local fans. We don't underestimate any other boxer. Um, and uh, like I said, we're only expe expe uh, expecting the best. Coach Napoleon Tamil Piao has high hopes from his boxer. Definitely the top five best camps. Yeah, so uh, his preparation is really well for this fight. And I, I'm, I'm really, uh, I think it's gonna, we're going to have a good outcome. The fight takes place on Saturday at the Maris Brothers High School Lambert Hall in Suva. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Rugby League fans in Tavo will get to witness some great matchups in the Fiji Secondary School's Rugby League competition on Saturday. This follows confirmation that all cup quarterfinals will be played at Tavo's Gavi Park. Meli Tavanga reports. The Fiji Secondary School Rugby League Committee has ensured exciting competition on the weekend when top schools will be gunning for the under-19 trophy. We have Ratu Katabulim School, also QBS in some of the grades, and, um, and also we, we have uh, Bar Provincial, who's also going to be featured in this particular quarterfinals. We have Lelin as well. The secondary school rugby league competition has set pathways for numerous players who are now contracted overseas. You could see that we have some uh, former players, not former players, current uh, but players that have uh, gone through a secondary school. Uh, we have um, uh, Kikau, we have uh, Emori Tuisese, Tuikam Kamiva, and uh, also who has migrated to rugby league? Marika. Uh, Marika. Yeah. So they were all secondary school. Uh, the cup quarterfinal sees minor schools in the West, giving them a major boost in experience and crowd support. We've had some uh, very interesting teams which have been uh, highly entertaining, uh, like Edi Patel, Latina Ra, and uh, even Utoka Mushu. Uh, these are some of the new teams uh, this year. After the cup final, the Fiji Secondary School Rugby League Committee will select a national under-19 team to play in an April tournament in Australia. Melitawanga, FBC Sports. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with your weather update. And in the world of the weird and the wonderful, long commutes, no longer an excuse. A Chinese university is holding classes inside a train. Details coming up. If getting a haircut was difficult, then Instagram is on it, making your life much easier. Weather time now with the lovely Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Yup, it's Thursday and we are this close to the weekend. But hey, it's a common misconception that the weekend starts on Friday. In theory, sure, Friday is the last day of the weekend. But in practice, well, we all know that Thursday night is truly the best day to get your squad together and get plans started. However, 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 do not forget to enjoy the weather. It kind of rhymes. Now let's check out the day in the West. Conditions were unsettled with showers expected to spread later tonight. Surprisingly, most centers were at 30 degrees. Eastwards from Pak Habarusuva, there were few light showers with a bit of sunshine and all that will change to heavy showers by tonight. 
And up in Vanmalevu, it was partly sunny, with Lambasa being the warmest at 33 degrees. At sea, east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough seas. And for those that love fishing, the next low tide tonight is at 9.21 with a high tide tomorrow morning at 3.30. For photographers that wish to take beautiful shots while the sun is rising, then be sure to catch it at 6.07. For tomorrow, everyone loves this day because it's Friday and the weather is looking so great as well. Tomorrow's temps, I guess the heat loves the western division because Nandi and Lotoka are in for heat with highs of 31. And looking further on to the shopping day for most, Saturday. The weather is likely to change as rain will stop over for a bit in the eastern and northern division. And that, Jackie, is FB's weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji Impulse today, we ask, is 90 days enough time to pay LTA fines? It's a good, good move from our government. We are supporting in that, very happy in that. Good, very good. It, give us, uh, it gives us time to pay the fine. This is an excellent idea. It's a very good idea. You know, it gives us uh, time to prepare and look. You know, you can't get money overnight. But if they offend within the 19 days, 90 days, and then they have, have another three months to pay. And then if they offend again, they have another three months to pay. So it comes to the whole year, they'll be paying around and then they'll be offending. So. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, a university is holding classes on a train so students commuting long distances can make the most of their travel time. It's very popular among the students as the usually boring commute has become much more useful. Recapping the main stories, exorbitant fees for former FMPF board members Penang Mill declared a write-off and more resources poured into new fire stations. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, we are asking, should fake profiles be allowed on social media? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, tonight's shot of the day, a stunning shot of Vatukarasa Beach along the Coral Coast, which has become a popular stopover for motorists along the Queen's Highway. The picture was taken by Vimlesh Chand. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. Until next time, from the team and I, good night. Kamal Roshni hai. हम लोगों में रहते हैं और मिर्ची एफएम सबसे बेस्ट स्टेशन है हमारा मिर्ची है हम गोल्ड ऑन तावुआ में रहता है और मिर्ची इज हॉट इन तावुआ हाय वी बाय हेल्प वी लव मिर्ची एफएम बिकॉज़ इट्स हॉट मैं बेस्ट तावुआ वहां में रहता हूं सुनता है यहां मिर्ची एफएम इज वेरी हॉट मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट